it's balanced, and somehow even more fun. How did Nordica just raise the bar again? Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob, another exciting video. I've been uh, anticipating this time of year yeah. for a while now because there's a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. Yeah, this, like the 2025, it's a big, it's like a monster, monster ski year. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, so there's lots more to come. We have tons of other stuff to share with you. Uh, but for now, we're focusing here on these new enforcers. Yep. Um, I don't think we need to take the time to describe the uh, the significance of the Enforcer collection. No, I think you can kind of leave it as like 10 years, top of the class. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Like you don't have to go much deeper than that. Yep. Um, powerful construction, yep. but like versatile shapes. That's kind of always been the, the concept. Yeah. And I would say before we get into any details, that concept remains the same. Yeah, there, yeah, it's very much in that same realm. Yeah. Still very powerful, still very precise. Yeah, and I suppose to, to compare directly to the conversation that we recently had about Blizzard, yeah. I would say those are bigger changes than what we get here. I think that's fair to say. So, pretty interesting stuff. Um, quick note, we have new widths. So it now goes Enforcer 89, Enforcer 94, Enforcer 99 and then Enforcer 104. So basically the 88 and the 100 are now 89 and 99. Yep. So things end in either 9 or 4. Yep, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute Jeff, if things end in either 9 or 4, what do they do with the Enforcer 110? Yeah, what about the 10? And there it is. This, is, this is the last one. This is the 2024 Enforcer 110, uh, and that is this is not a part of the 2025 collection, which makes sense yeah. because Unleashed kind of like holds that spot now. Yeah, and it's understandable that people will be disappointed, but if you're disappointed and haven't skied an Unleashed 108 or 114, you should do that before, you should do that yes, before I, shedding tears. I agree 100%. Um, there's a reason why Nordica did this black top sheet, yeah. kind of a throwback to the Hell Dorado. Yeah. Um, we couldn't really say that they were doing it black because it was the last year, but the reason that they did it black is because it's the last year. So certainly would encourage people to pick up a black Enforcer 110 because yeah. it's snazzy and it's kind of an iconic thing. Uh, and, and just as a, a personal eulogy, um, <laughs> I've owned multiple pairs of you. I skied you in a 191, that was ridiculous. I skied you in a 185, I, I had a great time. Uh, we, we've really got along well together, you and I, Enforcer 110, uh, and you'll forever hold a, a small part in my heart. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Bob, do you want to start with construction, as yeah. has become routine? Yeah, I'll take this 99 here as my prop. Sure. Um, not, again, like we said earlier, it's not a huge wholesale difference. Yeah. Um, really kind of refined changes going on with the construction here, uh, taking some of the things that work well with other Nordica models and implementing them here. We did say the same thing about Blizzard with Anomaly, kind of taking yep. flux form and moving it into a yep. new ski and true blend. Uh, this kind of has some of those similar notes. So if it sounds repetitive, it, it kind of is. Uh, basically with the wood core, uh, they got a new wood guy. 
So that yeah. I don't know how I don't know much more details other than that. But they found a different source of wood. Uh, they are still making that performance wood core built with poplar and beech. Yeah, um, and talking so, to Nordica, they went through vigorous testing to make yeah. sure that their new wood guy was up to the standards of their old wood guy. Yeah, and beyond that, I don't really know why they had a new wood guy. No, oh. they seemed interested in telling the story, and we're we laying are. the information on to you. Yep. Um, so differently sourced wood, but still poplar and beech. Uh, still kind of that nice mix of dense beech and energetic lightweight poplar, so you do get that same mix of energy and stability. Um, with the two metal laminates, still have the two metal laminates. This is kind of where, I, like, I kind of like to think of it as like enforcer specific metal, you know, whereas terrain specific metal in Santa Ana sure. or Unleashed uh, is kind of shaped a little bit differently. Sure, yeah. Really what they're doing is they're taking two millimeters out of the width yeah. on either side. My band-aid just fell off, that was gross. Um, but two millimeters out of either side on the laminates and really just kind of scooching it into the middle. Yeah, bit. and like two millimeters is not much. It's the, it's the width of the edge. Yeah, essentially, so yep. There's not a whole lot of loss in terms of overall metal, uh, but just brings it into the center of the ski a little bit more. Yeah, kind um, of in, in, intended to improve slower speed, yeah. just feel. Yep, and then like putting that more energetic wood a little bit closer to the edge and you know sure. maybe that's adding some of the springiness that we can talk about sure. when, we, when we get to performance. Uh, but no loss of stability on the high end at all due to that slight narrowing I, of the I metal. agree 100%. Um, and then what we've seen in some other skis from Nordica, specifically in their uh, double core models like Spitfire and Steadfast, um, they use that pulse core in between their wood laminates, and in this, they're taking that, but they're putting it in the underfoot zone, extending a little bit in front of and behind the binding zone. So that pulse core, that elastomer material, is going you know, underneath that top layer of metal uh, on top of the wood, and that is making for a smoother and more vibration-free underfoot zone. Yeah, you, I noticed um, we, we had a great day on Enforcers this morning. Yep. Um, and I really, I really was paying attention to it and, and couldn't help but notice that they do sound different. I agree. And it reminded me of like that super damp, rubbery sound that like a Rosignol Black Ops can make, which isn't surprising because there's a lot of rubber in that yeah. ski too. So I never would have described um, the previous generation or any enforcer as, as pingy, but yeah. Your ski phonics thing, like they do sound different. Yeah, and we, and it's nice that you brought that up. And we had our day earlier this year on the Enforcer 94s, uh, Jeff, Matt, and myself going out and trying different lengths and just kind of playing around with the, with the 94. Yeah. Um, so we do have that, that day very fresh in our memories. Totally. And when you compare it to how the new 94 feels, like there's definitely a difference in terms of yep. how the construction is making this new ski feel and behave. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. They keep yep. their, their true tip technology in here. Um, but again, it, it, it's, not, uh, it's not a monster change in terms of construction. Um, weights yeah. large, largely stay the same. Yep. There is a little bit of difference. We didn't bring notes because they're so similar. It, it feels relatively insignificant, I would say. Yeah, there's, you know, when you just compare last year's stated weight versus this year's stated weight, yeah. there are a few little variances like 2120 versus 2170 or sure. something like that per ski. Yep. Um, you know, and those could be just attributed to differences right. in Plus or wood grain. 50. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's really not like, and that was like the biggest difference. A lot of them are within like 10 grams of each other. Yeah. So yeah. Um, still, you know, most of these skis are over 2,000 grams. Yep. Still have that heft to them. Yeah, still strong, powerful skis yep. for sure. Um, do you want to do a little flex comparison? Sure. I got the 94 here. It's, it's, that, it's still a, a stiff ski. Yep. And I think like that's really important for enforcers because they've held that spot of being like stiff, powerful skis and like if anything, that might feel, the new one might feel a touch stiffer to me, to be honest. Um, I felt the same way when I was in here a little bit earlier, where 
um, the new ones did feel like they had a little bit more stiffness to them. Yeah. So rest assured, your enforcers are not right. softer. Right. Um, and then in terms of shape, there's some interesting stuff going on. Um, mostly on mostly my on side that on end, lot, but it, it's wall. true for all of them. Uh, they basically are tweaking the rocker profile. That's the biggest thing. And the theme, if you want to draw a consistent theme, is they all have a little bit more tail rocker. But with that, they also have a little bit less tip rocker. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So more tail rocker, less tip rocker. Nordica has these tremendous visuals on their skis. Uh, we really put those things through the ringer. Sorry about that, Nordica. <laughs> um, so this, like, I've always really loved this this base design. And basically, this is showing the start of the rocker and the contact point, or the widest point of the ski. So you can see that they've kind of, like, tightened those things together. Um, the, the, the concept remains the same, but slightly less tip rocker and then the widest part of the ski is brought down towards yeah. you. Yeah. So a little bit different. Do you want to do the same thing with that 104? Do I need them both? Probably need them both. Yeah, you kind of need them both. Yeah. So, that's... so it's same thing with this 104, which I think is going to be fairly significant in, in this 104 in particular, is there's certainly shorter tip rocker and again, it's consistent throughout all of these skis. And then I think the, the, the really interesting thing is they've kind of taken, so old Enforcer 104 here, we've got that same kind of graphic yep. on the tail. You used to only have this graphic on the tail on the 104 right. and the 110. Now it's on everything. So why don't we do a, one of, a 104 comparison, then maybe we can do an 89 comparison as well in the tail. So pretty interesting here, because it's, it's dependent on different skis. So the 104 has shorter tail rocker. Yep. But that's the only one that has shorter tail rocker. Now, if, let's do the same thing with that 99 compared to the 100. That one back. I'll take this one. In the 100, the story is completely the opposite. Right. So basically, I think a good way to think about this is the shape of the entire new force Enforcer collection is kind of inspired by the shape of this ski, of the Enforcer 104, but reined back a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like they, you know, they started here. They said this is going to be the rockered one, and moved down the line. Kinda, but yeah. Certainly, it makes a bigger difference in the '99. And I know you're sad about the 104, and we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. But yeah, I don't know if like sad is the right word, but like selfishly, I always loved the amount of splay and yeah. length of rocker in the Enforcer 104. Because to me, it looked and skied like a twin tip. Right. Um, and I think, like, the new ski is still, it's, it's fantastic. And it's a great, like, progression of what the Enforcer 104 should be. Again, with the recent existence of Unleashed. They right. don't need, like, every ski that's over 100 to be a twin tip. Yeah. And that's, like, kind of where we were. So I think it makes sense to make the 104 a little bit more directional. Yeah. And like you can certainly feel it on the snow, like that yeah. thing carves. I mean, the old this one, the phenomenal carver for yeah. 104, but the new one feels even more so. Yeah, more engaging, yeah. more precise, I would say. Um, and there's another reason for that too, which kind of mixes between shape and profile, and that's the the mount point. Yeah. So with the increase in tail rocker mm -hmm. in all of these skis. If you know me or if you watch our content, maybe you know that like I, I often think about where you are in the camber profile of the ski. Yeah. And basically by adding tail rocker to all these skis, they push the camber profile forward. Yep. So the mount point does go forward about one centimeter. 
Yeah, and I kind of lined them up and looked at them before we did this, and they were all very consistent about a centimeter forward. Yeah, and I would say I don't notice a, a huge difference in feel from mount point. I notice it because I'm typically in that more back sure. part. So when I go forward in a ski, it's more pronounced for me. Yeah. And uh, I think that that really helps with the engagement of the turn. Yeah. And specifically, in, it actually gets progressively less significant, I found, as you go narrower. Yeah. No, I think that makes sense. And I think any all of the changes, I think, are a little bit less significant yeah. over here. And then we really get into an interesting conversation over there. Yeah. Do you want to start that conversation? Do you want to talk about each ski a little bit? Let's do it. So I suppose before we do this, I always forget to do this, but <laughs> these will be available. Um, Nordica has, has insured us by February 1st. Uh, the product pages are going up on our website right now. For now, it'll be a pre-order thing. Yep. Um, and we still have plenty of these enforcers, too. And like, one could argue that they're, I don't know, like these are not bad skis. Right. And like, if you prefer a flatter tail, I don't know. Yep. Pick one up because they're they're gonna be gone. Um, so let's start with this. Oh, oh boy. boy, I got this. It's just an overwhelming amount of enforcers on this wall today. Um, I'll give you both. No oh boy. Oh boy. Here, take this. I got it. Okay. We're good. I promise. <laughs> this is a busy wall of enforcers. Probably should have leaned them more than just stand them straight up and down. Well, they're pretty tippy for non non twin tips. For directional skis, these are some of our biggest fallers. Well, round, rounded tails. They're very round. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bob, you've got the new one there. Yep. This is the old one, Enforcer 88 current. Yeah. Um, let's take a quick look at the tail rocker difference here, uh, because again, like it's progressive. So, in these narrower skis, I would say it, it's less of a difference, but yeah. it's definitely there. Yep. There's definitely more tail rocker in that ski. Uh, Enforcer 88, now Enforcer 89, has always been one of my favorite skis in the like 88 to 90 underfoot all mountain ski with metal category, which is a big category. We've talked about this plenty. Um, I've always really, really enjoyed how well they carve. They are just a dream to carve. Uh, the turn radius has always been really fun to me. This 17.5 and this 179 comes across the fall line really easily. Great engagement. Um, and I've always found them to be pretty versatile. And I think what they've done with this new ski is they've taken it further along that path of versatility. Yeah, no, I agree. And it always kind of comes up as being like, this is a great example of a ski that's modeled after the widest of the more free ride versions. Yeah. but pared down into a narrower one, when you combine it with that burly build, it makes it an, a phenomenal, like, phenomenally torsionally stiff ski yep. for holding on ice, yep. but still has that more free ride character to it. So when we put it up against, you know, a, a Kendo or a Brahma 88, yep. it's always been, well, this one's kind of more based off of a free ride ski Correct. with this build. Yep. So it's always kind of floated to that realm. Yeah. So I've skied, I, I spent, most of my time so far has been spent on 89 and 99. Yeah. Um, although I've skied all of them at this point. Uh, I don't think that, I don't think they took anything away from its carving performance. No, I don't think so either. But I do think that if you're the type of skier that wants to take this into moguls or trees or anything like that, they've made it a touch easier. And that's like, a commendable accomplishment for Nordica. Yeah. Because it's always really hard to improve one characteristic without sacrificing a little bit of another characteristic. And who knows, maybe we haven't had it on like true bulletproof boiler plate snow and maybe I would notice a difference there, but gosh, I don't think so. No, oh, that first day that we were out on these, that was pretty firm. It was, yeah. And no issues with any of these, but certainly highlighted in the 89. Yeah. Um, somewhat limited terrain still at Stowe, although things are drastically improving. Today was a huge step in the right direction. Yep. So we were kind of forced, in a way, into skiing it at slower speeds on lower angle terrain. And kind of speaking to 
better slow speed compliance from pulling the metal in a tiny bit, I think they did something. Yeah. Like I do, I do think the ski feels better going slower. And I think it feels a little bit easier to manipulate at a lower edge angle and at on, on lower angle terrain. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. So it's cool. And I think a lot of people, or I wouldn't be surprised or I wouldn't fault you if you think this way of thinking like, oh, they dumbed it down. But again, I really don't think so. No, you can't, you can't say that with 100% certainty. No. In fact, I, can, I feel like I can say the opposite with 98% right. certainty, yeah. but they didn't <laughs> dumb it down. So still a great ski. It still occupies the same exact spot that it does in the world of skis, although as we will see going forward this year, things may shift around it. Yep. I don't think the enforcer itself is moving up or down the, the progression of playful to serious or whatever you want to call it. I think skis might, might move around it. Yeah. So. Really, really cool. Um, always been a good one here in Stowe, too. Yeah, certainly an excellent lower snow, all mountain ski. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. Yep. Um, moving on to the 94. Bob, you skied this thing all morning today. All morning and pretty much all last week. Yeah. I split my time between Anomaly 88 and Enforcer 94 last week. So... As I have spent more time on the 89 and 99, what do you think? Um, it was very interesting, again, bringing that previous video we did this year about the, that Enforcer 94. And skiing that in a 179 really opened my eyes to what going a little bit shorter does when you still have a pretty, pretty burly build. Yeah. Uh, this one, this new ski, even takes it to the next level where now it's opening up a lot more instances for me personally. Yep. Um, you know, I picked up like that Headcore 93 last year for my personal ski. Yep. It mixed lighter weight, like skiing in the woods, moguls, like just making it easier so I could ski with my kids and have a high performance ski for myself. And this is just taking that to the next level because it's offering uh, just that crisp, clean carving performance. Yeah, I'm noticing a lot more energy yes. in this than the other one. Um, <clears throat> you know, just from the exit of the turn and the initiation of the turn. You know, I always like, I, you know, R.I.P. Uh, not R.I.P. But farewell to um, Bill Belichick with the Patriots. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the no, I'm going to bring Bill again. Belichick into it. No, where sure, he Did always not expect this analogy. I'm, <laughs> I'm here for it. I loved always hearing him talk about like the three phases of the game: the offense, defense, and special teams. Yep. And I couldn't help but thinking that this ski really excels in three phases of the turn. So initiation, sure. um, hitting that side cut, hitting that radius to it, it, its purity, and then rebound out of the out of the finish of the turn. So yep. in all three phases of the turn, I found this to be just an extraordinarily sophisticated feel uh, and just a very much more energetic and uh, appealing ski in that yeah. regard. And so I've been having an absolute blast. Totally. No, I th and I think that's a spot on assessment. And I think it's really, it's, it's something that I've been thinking about is like looking at expectations or guesses of what the next enforcers could yeah. be most people go to wait yeah most people are like I bet they're gonna be lighter right thinking that they're gonna make them like easier to ski sort of and it's like they achieve that but in different ways than just making them lighter yeah and I think they're just like overall more dynamic and I, I think I do think you feel it in this 94 I think it's a combination of all the things they did which is really like it's funny when we bring them up and then to hear them, hear them said, and you're like, ah, new wood guy, eh. mount yeah. point a centimeter forward, eh. yeah. slightly narrower metal. Like yeah. these no. are all kind of yeah. weird things, but then you put them on snow and, and you start to feel that this is a different ski yeah. than the previous version. Yeah, and it, I always think that stuff is really interesting. And like for me, I I'll usually have to go through some mental progression. Yeah. Like I I will admit that when we first saw these skis, first heard about them, I was like, they just made the same ski. Yeah. And it's like the combination of all the subtle changes, the the it's the 
sum is greater than the parts, what yeah, the, yeah what's the, I don't know. <laughs> no, I think you got it. Completely messed that yeah. up. Um, but it's true. Yeah. So. So subtle changes to this, but really positive changes in my, in my experience over the past few weeks. Yep. But yeah, love this thing. Love it in the 179. Um, haven't gotten to ski it in the 185. Yep. We didn't cover that. No, nah, I figured I'd save that All for right. the end. We always, we always forget something. <laughs> uh, and then moving on to the Enforcer 99. So this, to me, can I have both new ones? Sure. Can you flip over a, I know we already did this, but can you flip over an Enforcer 100 there? This, to me, is, 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 is like a fairly significant change. So where does your rocker start? Uh, if, I, if I decamber, right about here. Yeah, so it's really not that much not longer. Much longer. But it does, you feel it. Um, many of you may know Brooks Kern. Uh, he's a great skier, skis for Nordica, um, spends a lot of time at Stowe. We've, we've skied with him a bunch. You're seeing him in this video. Um, we posted a little teaser video on social media this morning, and he commented and said something that I thought was really interesting. He was like, the Enforcer 99 is like now the ultimate versatile East Coast weapon. Yeah. Which I, I thought was like a pretty good assessment. Like, I know there are lots of people that love that Enforcer 100. I certainly don't dislike it, but it's, it can be a bit of a handful. Like, it's, it's pretty darn strong in the tail. It's, it's fairly flat in the tail. Yeah. And like, I mostly just loved skiing groomers on it. Which, when you get up to 100 underfoot and you're like, your focus is groomers, or like that's the thing that you like most about the ski, I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. So now this ski, it basically retains everything that that ski can do. I, th I think, sure, maybe that ski is a touch more powerful out of the tail, the 100, but I don't know. I don't think it's much more powerful out of the tail. It's, it's more like, it's more like smooth power out of the tail, but it's hard to get. Yeah. And this makes, when you add the rebound and the energy in. Totally. That really and it's sets like a, it apart. And it's like, I think an improvement overall and it's yeah. feel like I was finding a ton of energy in this ski. Um, and I will also say that it's still not easy when you take it off trail into softer snow, but it's far easier like yeah. the the flickability, the the like, the ease of getting your tail to kick out, it, it really it really feels influenced by the Enforcer 104. Yep. And I'm I'm really excited about that. Um, interestingly, it's not a ski that I would necessarily buy for myself. Like you know, I'm not necessarily the target market. I, when I'm a hundred under or close to a hundred underfoot. Chances are I want a little bit more tail rocker, yeah. like a twin tip shape. But there are so, so many skiers, like directional skiers, 100% directional skiers that are going to absolutely love this thing and just find a bit more of a dynamic and versatile skiing experience compared to the outgoing Enforcer 100. I was pretty shocked at the initiation boost in yeah. the 99. Yeah. I found that to be one of its best characteristics especially on that first day when it was pretty firm that when you tipped it on edge, it really brought you into the turn yeah. uh, with intent. Yeah, and um, this is interesting. So I've skied, I've now skied these new enforcers with three different boots, Bob. Oh, very fun. Yes, and I, today I was on like a hybrid touring boot because I kind of wanted to see what that felt like. Yeah. And like the boots I was skiing are great. Like that's a different story. Any, I think any hybrid touring boot, you could say the same thing about, about this. I found the limit of the boot way, way before yeah. I found, I never found the limit of this ski. Like, it's, it's still a strong ski. You could ski it with like a 130 flex race boot and get along with it really well. Um, and you could ski it in a softer boot too. You just like, you might not be like achieving its peak, right. peak potential. But I think this thing's awesome. Um, but I do think like it's important for people to know that it's still relatively heavy. Yep. It's not a drastic change in tail shape. So the things that we've said about enforcers over the years about their them being fatiguing and somewhat challenging to ski, I do think some of that carries over. But 
I don't think that's a bad thing either, because uh, something needs to be in that category. Well, Not everything can be easy to ski. Right. And they've had 10 years of data collection and totally. feedback from skiers all over the world totally. to say, what, do we, what are the critical things that we need to improve with uh, this, you know, kind of, I mean, are we still, is this still the flagship width, do you think? I'm sure. Yeah. I think so. I mean, it was kind of the original. Uh, yeah. So it's, I think it, it forever it, will be the, the flagship. Yeah. And so they've had 10 years to collect data and feedback. Yeah. And I think that the move from 100 to 99 really addresses some of the issues that people had in terms of criticisms where, yeah. well, it's really hard to get the ski to come out with energy, come out of the turn with energy. Like, yeah. tough to get this thing sideways, sure. you know, if you have to or if you want to. Yeah. Um, so a lot of those things have definitely been addressed, uh, and I think that this just ends up being more refined for sure. I agree. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the 104 now? Yeah. I so, feel like this is where you're going to get a little sad, but... Me? Yeah. It's fine. Which ones are these guys? It's fine. Guys? I have an Unleashed 98. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we've talked about that before. Like, when they came out with the Enforcer 104, I was kind of like, oh, my God, that's the ski that I've been wanting, like a twin yeah. tip with some metal in it. And then they came out with the Unleashed 98. And I was like, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, that's actually <laughs> the ski that, that yeah. I've been waiting for. So, sure, there's a part of me that's like... You know, it, it's sad to see this kind of twin tippy shape go uh, in both the 110 and the 104, but I, I certainly understand it, and it's one of those situations where I just feel like it's going to be a benefit for more, for a, a greater percentage of the skiing population. I feel like when you see people posting videos of them skiing the 104 free, <clears throat> they're generally using it as a higher speed, open area, crud busting, powder, you know, yes. soft snow, yes. you know, really just ripping that more direct, like they're skiing it like a directional ski. Yes. And I think Nordica just kind of saw that and said, well, let's Boost make it a that. little bit more directional. Yes. Um, which is also interesting when compared to, uh, you know, something like that Anomaly 102 we were talking about that kind of skews a little bit more to the free ride side. Yeah. Uh, where this 104 is now kind of moving more directional. Which is interesting because that's not in relation to each other. It, just in, rela in relation to the skis that they so, are replacing. Yes. Because I would say that this is more free ridey than in Anomaly 102. Yep, I so, would agree. Just wanted to <laughs> make, make, point, point that out before yep. people got confused. Um, but no, I think you, you, you nailed it. Like, this is a crud buster. Yeah. This is like high speed charger ski, uh, but still still has that release ability and, and still can like wiggle around through trees, still is gonna be fun in soft snow. But yeah, with the existence of the Unleashed 108 and 114, yeah. it's still hard for me to remember that one. I don't think this needs to be like a powder ski. It's more of like a kind of narrow big mountain charger. And when I got on this the other week, I, you know, got maybe 10 turns in, and I'm thinking to myself, how do they do it? How do they make a 104 ski and carve so well? How do they make a turn so well? Yeah, it almost you, has two different personalities. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And we see it, you know, when, you know, we put Brooks and Joe and some other high power, and Matt, yeah, Matt you know. They're all young, flexible, yeah, strong guys. they're strong skiers. Yeah. And they are making this thing look like it is a competition slalom ski. I know, it's pretty wild. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and, but it still just has the ability to, to run. So it combines that crisp and sharp turning ability with that directional speed. Yeah. Which is a, a pretty rare combination of attributes. Yeah, it really is. It, it's combining a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, that, that kind of snappy carve, longitudinal stability, but then if you're skiing at like completely flat base, it's there's like some wiggle factor to yeah. it, which I think it, it's uh, that's always been impressive to me about the Enforcer 104, and they definitely retain that. And like you were saying, you know, you see most people skiing fast on it and using it as like a, a stable, powerful ski, and like there aren't many weirdos like me that like mounted it further forward right. and like skied switch on it. <laughs> yeah. Like I am admittedly a, a different skier than the general skiing population. So I don't, I'm not concerned about that change whatsoever. Yeah. 
No, I, I really like that, and I had him on the table over there. It was really interesting to see the the lower tip rocker profile, too. Like, yeah. the whole thing is flatter. Yeah, yeah which tail is, is flatter, tip's flatter. Yeah. yeah, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. And still just incredibly strong. Yeah. Um, lengths. We yeah. forgot to talk about lengths. Uh, lengths, the most important thing, it now breaks at 6. They basically, like retained the 179 length yeah. and then built everything off that sort of yep so it goes uh 179 and then 185 and then 191 in those two skis over there we also go down to 173 and 167 yeah um, and then same is true over here except over here we don't get a 191 yeah which i think makes sense because there's really not I challenge you to ski this in a 185 and, and need a 191, regardless of who you are. Yeah. You'd have to be very large. You'd have to be very large and very aggressive yeah. with some, like, really open high-speed terrain and, like, no one else on the trail. Yep. And then you're good. <laughs> yeah, then you're good. Sure, then you can have a 191, but that doesn't happen very often. Um, anything else you want to say? I don't think so. You know, like, I would just... I would make an argument for the 94 is that Eastern weapon. Yeah, no, and I, I, I'm glad that you pointed that out because I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Like, if anything, I, I would agree with you that that 99 is, like, a, probably a better Rockies and West yeah. application. Uh, where, I th you know, I also think it's fair to say that we are in a, a more unique Eastern location than most Eastern locations. Yeah. Like, it's a great stow ski, but it's probably not, like, a great watch you sit ski. It's also hard to deny, like, my experience on the 99 and how well it carved on very firm snow. Yeah. Like. No, exactly. It does that really well. But, yeah. you know, if you're, if still, if you're going to have one around here, then I think the 94 makes slightly more sense. Yeah, I would agree. And you've, uh, historically, Bob, you've had an Enforcer 88 and an Enforcer 100. Yep. I believe you still own both of those skis. I do. Is it time for a 94? I think so. I kinda, I'm ready. I kind of assume that would be your <laughs> answer. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's the brand new Enforcer collection from Nordica. Again, they will be available this winter. Uh, hopefully we'll have them soon. Uh, we've been guaranteed by February 1st. So you can place your order now if you want one, and you'll get it. Um, and if you're feeling nostalgic and you want a flatter tail and you want, or you want more tail rocker right. over there in the yep. 104, you can still like, get these it. are different things, you can, you can still get it. Yeah. So let us know if you have any questions and we will talk to you soon. Bye.